what the Burl Hunter is doing today. Look at this beautiful step down river island we created. We're gonna show you step by step how we made this work of art out of redwood burl and epoxy. The first thing we have to do is create a mold. And so what you're seeing us do right now is apply contact paper to plexiglass. That is gonna be the bottom of our mold. Make sure that your mold is square because you want your island to turn out square. The next thing that we do, we place the slabs in the mold and we seal coat it. Remember, you wanna seal coat your wood three times to make sure that there is no air bubbles that are gonna come up through the wood. The next thing we're doing is running a thin layer of epoxy. That does two things. It glues the slab down to the mold and it fills up any gaps underneath that might be there. Just remember to use a torch to pop all of the surface bubbles. It is okay that the flame touches the epoxy. However, you don't want to sit in one place. You want to continually move your torch back and forth because remember you're only popping the bubbles. So what we're doing right now is putting two by fours across the mold and we're fastening them to the mold with screws so that we can block underneath and the slabs will not float when we pour the deep pour. This is always an exciting time when we are gonna pour gallons and gallons of epoxy into the river. Here's a pro tip. Make sure that your platform is level. That way you won't have one side or the other thicker. This pour is gonna use two varieties of stone coat epoxy. We're gonna use for the, the big area, we're gonna be using Supercast. So Supercast needs volume to harden. So the big areas are volume, but all of these small cracks right here, uh, we, don't, we won't have the volume that we need. So we're gonna be pouring uh, the regular stone coat heat resistant epoxy in these smaller cracks. Now pro tip, you want to always make sure that your mold is watertight or epoxy tight. But if it does spring a leak, here is the remedy. We get to use our uh, emergency epoxy stuff. Right there it's coming out, so right there is where I'm going to Chase it, pushing it in. All right, there we go. Hundreds of dollars saved right here by a $9 item. Those gold flakes that you see in the epoxy? That is 24 karat gold flake. You can see how the epoxy is all the way to the top of the slabs. The next step is to plane down the slab so everything is level.
here's where the true beauty starts to pop on this project. We had to remold it to make sure that we had a thick enough layer of epoxy on top. With every top pour that you do, remember you want to torch it three times, five minutes apart, but you don't want to heat up the epoxy. You're just popping bubbles. If you've done your seal coat three times and plugged up all of your holes, your pour should be glass smooth. Our client wanted a live edge inside and on the outside of our island. So I'm naturalizing the edges for this island countertop. I'm doing a final sand all the way to 220 grit sandpaper. The next portion on the agenda is the drop down table. This is the next step of the project. Remember to seal coat your sides really well for the pour. You don't want any bubbles coming through. I'm putting a little bit of black in the green so that when it does billow, it is highlighted with a faint black hue. Now at this point, I don't want to be stirring it at all. All I'll do is be blending the colors. It's going to churn enough to where it's gonna do its own stirring. The chemical reaction is doing, uh, doing the stirring. Oh, that's, that's some beautiful billow right there. Yeah, I didn't see that. Oh, it's starting to really pillow billow right here. Yeah, popcorn quilt right there. Torch it one more time. Once again, on the CNC to level out the slab so that we can start the final processes of three seal coats, a naturalization of the edges, and then the final coat. Our client wanted rounded edges for the lower level table. So here we have naturalized the edges and getting it ready for the seal coat. Check out our soft touch platforms for when you have a finished edge that you don't want to be marked up. We are using the Dominator by Fest tool to fasten our waterfall to the lower level table. I've already drilled the holes. Not only that, I have routed out channels. That's where the lights are gonna go. It's gonna look awesome when we light it up. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to have my biscuits. I need to have my squares because you want this to be square. And I have to have my clamps. So I have two clamps, I have two squares. Everything has been prepped. I don't have to uh, epoxy this side. This is already done, but I want this corner, this 90 degree right here. I want that sealed in case uh, a cup of coffee or whatever is spilled. All right, so first thing I need to do is mix this. I'm using stone coat countertop heat resistant epoxy. Um, it is my go-to. I love these guys. I love this product. And I'm going to do a full cup so that I make sure that I have enough. Uh, whenever you're doing your flood coat, three ounces per square foot. This is right there. Put this away. 
I'm gonna do 14 ounces again. Always pour your B first because it's less thick. Your A is super thick. Do as I say, not as I do. Never pour or mix on your project because I got a little bit of dribble right there and that right there will not harden. So I have to wipe it up. Unmixed epoxy does not harden. All right. I'm mixing the sides so that we get, make sure everything gets mixed. All right. Now, um, here's, here's one thing that I'm gonna do. I've gotta be very careful not to get any epoxy on the, on the surface here. But I'm gonna dip this and poke it in there. This epoxy makes excellent glue. Set this right there. I'm gonna pour a little bit inside. Beautiful. Square and square. There we go. All right. Looking good. All right, here we go. Here comes the beauty. a square notch trowel, an eighth inch square notch trowel, so it leaves just the right amount on the project. And all the excess goes over the edge, because you have the edges to get also. Notice how the waterfall matches up perfectly to the river on the lower table. Woo doggy, that is some beautiful stuff there. I have to put some on the back side because it overhangs a little bit the cabinetry. The, the cabinetry is 48 inches, this table is 51 inches, so you're gonna be able to see some of the back on this vertical piece. Just remember, if you're enjoying this video, um, sign up for our, or go to our channel and subscribe to youtube.com uh, slash Oregon Burls. Also, if you needed any um, slabs, we have a lot of these redwood slabs, uh, OregonBurls.com. And all I'm doing with the torch is I don't want to heat up the epoxy. I just want to pop the surface bubbles. And in about five minutes, I'm going to come back, pop the bubbles again, and I should be pretty done. I use exclusively stone coat countertop epoxy. Because it is heat resistant up to uh, 475 degrees and after 28 days it is scratch resistant.
It is always nice when following the blueprint, it actually fits in real life. Notice how the island river matches perfectly to the waterfall. This is one of the most stressful times of this job, and that is cutting the sink into the island. So many things can go wrong. The first thing that we want to do is protect the surface. So we are using masking tape on every place that we have to cut and mark. You want to make sure that you use a good quality masking tape for this job because you don't want to mar or scratch or uh, do anything that will hurt the surface of the epoxy. All right, here's a pro tip you guys. If you ever want to know what is true square, there's three numbers that you have to remember. It is three, four, five. So you can measure out right here. Three inches, mark it, four inches, mark it, and then you have to have five inches from point to point. If that's exact, you are square. When that sink fits perfect, <laughs> there's the relief. <laughs> Not until. We had to use a two and three quarter inch hole saw to match the radius of the sink. So we're cutting out each corner so that we can later on cut with the circular saw the straight edges. Now this is an exciting part of the project where we are routing in the channels for backlighting. This whole island is going to light up. After finishing the channels, we're applying the sticky back light strip to the channels. You can purchase these on Amazon. The link is down below. This was an amazing project. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions, please put them down below in the comments. We will do our best to get back with you. You can visit our website at organbrawls.com or you can still click and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube.